Two teams coming into Monday Night Football on two opposite ends of the spectrum. The Minnesota Vikings, they have won back-to-back games against divisional foes, no less. Chicago Bears, meanwhile, they are on a three-game losing streak. So we're going to break down this matchup. We'll start with the Bears offense first. Nick Foles, I still believe he's a better option for the Bears at quarterback ahead of Mitch Trubisky, but quite honestly, based off what we've seen up to this point, it's not by much because Nick Foles, he just doesn't look comfortable going beyond his first and second reads, and I feel like I'm being very generous by saying beyond the second read because for the most part, after the first read, if the first read is not there, he is done. A lot of safe design plays, quick throws to the outside, Third downs, whether it's third and long or third and short, he almost always settles for the check down passes. So kind of similar to Kirk Cousins to a degree, but they do have playmakers, specifically at the wide receiver spot. Allen Robinson is so underrated, one of the best wide receivers in the game. Darnell Mooney, their wide receiver, very explosive, and you can't forget about Anthony Miller. The one thing I will say, though, is because kind of a basic ass type of offense that Chicago runs. I will say on second down, usually it's almost always on second. Sometimes it's on first down too, but for the most part, it's on second downs. That's when they want to go for the big play. Maybe every other drive on second down, they want to go to the big play to Darnell Mooney or Allen Robinson. So I would say for the safeties, first and third down, you can feel comfortable coming up, stacking maybe eight men in the box, but second down, Be on the lookout for that deep play. And then you look at their run game. They've got David Montgomery, who I think is a nice player, but honestly his offensive line does him no favors, which is why the Chicago Bears are dead last in rushing yards per game. So I think as long as the Vikings defensive line holds up with occasional pressure, occasional penetration from our one-two punch at linebacker, Eric Hendricks and Eric Wilson, and basically force Nick Foles to throw the Bears into victory, I think you're going to give yourselves a shot. This game is really going to come down to which defense shines the most. Speaking of which, we're going to go to the Bears defense, in which it reminds me of Al Pacino in any given Sunday, the famous speech that he gives in the locker room to his team at halftime. The game is all about inches. The margin of error is so small. That's the difference between winning and losing. That is the Chicago Bears defense because I'm telling you right now, Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith, even in the secondary, Kyle Fuller, he's going to make you work. You have to earn every inch and yard that you can against this Chicago Bears defense. And I talked about how after Sunday's win for the Vikings against the Detroit Lions, even if the Vikings finish 3-13, and baseline Dalvin Cook, he should be an Offensive Player of the Year candidate. But if they turn their season around, he should be an MVP candidate. And I say worst case with the offensive line of the Vikings, even if you can't stick your blocks, Dalvin Cook, he's so talented that all you have to do is present yourself as an obstacle in front of your man. Dalvin Cook, he'll take it the rest of the way. That's not going to work against this defense. You have to stick your blocks because I'm telling you right now, if you're soft, they will blow up the lanes and get to Dalvin Cook like it's nobody's business. Also, the play calling. You got to get creative. I haven't played Madden or 10 or 15 years, but I remember the last time I played, there was this play called the HB Dive. I don't know if it's still in today's Madden, the basic handoff to the running back, run it up the gut and see what happens. If you think you're going to do that against the Bears defense, you've got another thing coming. Albeit in a loss last week to the Tennessee Titans, the Chicago Bears defense, they held Derrick Henry to 3.2 yards per carry. So you got to get creative with the play calling, edge runs with Dalvin Cook, screen passes to the outside, even in passes to your wide receiver, focus on the outside, jet sweeps, get to the outside, get some breathing room, get yourself in some one-on-one situations, and you can make something happen against the LA Rams. Oh my God, Jared Goff, they killed the Bears defense with the play action bootleg, just roll out. Kirk Cousins, even if you aren't calling those plays, if you're Gary Kubiak, Kirk Cousins, you know, you have to know the heat is coming. The reckoning is coming. You have to stand tall, know where your reads are, and you can give yourselves a fighting chance. The Vikings defense, I think they will do a respectable job against Nick Foles and the Chicago Bears offense. But Kirk Cousins, can you make just one play more than Nick Foles? That's all it's going to take. 
And you know what? Before this season started, I predicted that the Vikings would get swept by the Bears this year again because the last two years we have never beat Matt Nagy as head coach of the Chicago Bears. But I just got a strange feeling, especially with Ezra Cleveland now playing on the offensive line. The offensive line, they've got some swagger to them. Riley Reef, he's playing a lot better. Oh, my God, I know how this story ends. Every time I do this, it just kicks me in the ass right after. I'm going to say the Vikings pull off the upset. They pull off the upset. 21 to 20. Dan Bailey makes a field goal to end the game after being down 18 to 20. Vikings win 21 to 20. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. We do this three times a week. Mediocre at Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Check me out on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at Realistic Randy. We'll see you next time.